In the world of longevity, there's a lot of skepticism over a lot of things, and rightfully so. They were not just talking about basic body composition things, we're talking about real life and trying to live with as much vitality for as long as we can. So that's why I'm pretty cautious with the kinds of things that I talk about. But drinking one cup of this one day and one cup another day, based upon literature, might be really, really powerful. And when I talk about longevity, it's not just longevity like, how long do you live? I'm talking more about health span too. Like if we can reduce oxidative stressors, if we can modulate inflammation, if we can feel good, then I'd much rather live to be 80 years old, but going and blowing until I die, than live to be 100 and be miserable for the last 30 years of my life, right? So the context of longevity really matters. Like, how do you look at this? And when I evaluate research and when I evaluate things to bring into my life or to share with you, I factor this in. And oxidative stress, cellular repair, DNA repair, things called FOXO3, which we'll talk about, these things matter to me. So let's get down to it, and I'll share with you the kinds of things that I'm talking about. I'm talking about specific kinds of tea, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking immediately green tea, but it's not just that. There's different kinds and how you should rotate them. So we'll get to that in just a second. After today's video, our sponsor today is Armra, and that is a 10% off discount link. If you have ever tried colostrum before, then you know how powerful the stuff is, but most colostrum, if not all colostrum, is heat treated, which means you're breaking down the bioactive compounds. The bioactive compounds in colostrum are what give it the potential effect. So Armra has over 400 bioactive compounds in it, and it's cold treated. They have a cold technology so they don't have to heat it and break down all the bioavailable compounds that give it its potential effect when it comes down to recovery. I can speak anecdotally, it's made a huge difference in my recovery scores on my Whoop. Now I'm testing out a couple of different things so I can't be 100% sure, but it's the lowest hanging fruit and it seems to be the most logical one, especially when you look at the literature. So that link down below saves you 10% off. Highly recommend you check them out. They've got a recovery one and they've got a, just a kind of a general one for people that maybe aren't working out as much. That link down below in the top line of the description. So first, I am going to talk about green tea because this is very interesting and then we'll talk about the others. So there is a study published in Biomedical and Environmental Sciences and this study was evaluating the effects of green tea polyphenols, not just green tea like extract or EGCG, but straight up the polyphenols. Okay? And what they were looking at was how it impacted a number of different things related to oxidative stress, but also a few other things. So what they did is they put mice on a very high fat diet. Okay, and a lot of times when you put rodents or anything on like a super high fat diet, a couple things happen. One, they eat a lot more, so their caloric intake is very, very high, and they end up having a high amount of oxidative stress because the caloric intake is high, and usually saturated fat in a high concentration like that is going to trigger some issues. So what they saw is when they did this, there was an increase in malonaldehyde, which is very, very bad, and it increases what's called lipid peroxidation. So basically oxidizes fats in their body, it can disrupt cellular membranes, so the membranes don't work as well and can't receive signals or nutrients as well, and it becomes essentially a rancid membrane. Additionally, they saw reductions in what are called sirtuins, and sirtuins are sort of these things that downstream affect how we respond to stressors. They affect longevity in lots of different ways. So there was a decrease in overall sirtuin activity. There was a decrease in what's called PPAR-alpha, which is wild because PPAR-alpha is involved in fatty acid metabolism. It's a transcription factor that encourages our body to basically use fats more, which is wild because they put mice on a high fat diet, yet it decreased this. And then lastly, they had an increase in manganese superoxide dismutase acetylation, which essentially just means it crazy skyrocketed oxidative stress. When they gave them green tea extract, it completely, completely reversed all these negative effects. So it's like the green tea literally offset the bad diet as far as these markers were concerned. So even though their diet was terrible, it was completely resetting it. Now, it's not just the green tea extract though, okay? If you drink green tea, you're getting those polyphenols, but you're also getting EGCG, which is a catechin, some classified as a polyphenol, but technically epigallocatechin 3 galate is technically a catechin, slightly different avenue. This study found that EGCG increased what is called FOXO 
3. If you've watched my channel before, you've probably seen enough videos about FOXO3 to go crazy. But FOXO3 is the stress response sort of transcription factor. So let's say, for example, I exercise. I'm going to increase FOXO3 because my body is stressed and that FOXO3 is then going to increase endogenous antioxidants like glutathione, like uh, superoxide dismutase, and a number of other things. So FOXO3 is very important and we need to have spikes and then drops of it. We find that green tea, or in this case EGCG, activated FOXO3 better. So it means that you're getting more activation of uh, these processes that make you, well, less oxidatively stressed. Another thing that this can do for you is it can modulate mitophagy and autophagy. So if you're someone that's watched my videos about fasting and how autophagy works and that cellular recycling, cellular repair, well, that also happens at a mitochondrial level with mitophagy. So your mito mitochondria actually repair and get stronger in the survival of the fittest way. Okay, so we learned about green tea, but get this, there's now some solid evidence behind theoflavins and black tea and oolong tea. I'm not suggesting you quit coffee, but I am suggesting you drink green tea, you rotate it out with black tea, with oolong tea, and you switch it up. Check out this research. This study was published in Experimental Gerontology. And hear me out, it was done on fruit flies. Note, with longevity stuff, we cannot put humans in metabolic wards and for the rest of their life and test lifespan, right? We just can't do that. But with fruit flies, we can, and we can take a little bit of it to the bank. And we're talking about green tea here. We're not talking about going and something crazy that's risky, right? So they found that these fruit flies would live to be about 51 days, but when they gave them black tea extract, they'd live to 56 days. That was pretty cool. But then just like the mice, they exposed these, exposed these flies to a high fat diet. When they exposed them to a high fat diet, their lifespan went down to 15 days. Pretty crappy, 15 days. But black tea extract almost doubled their life to 28 days from there. So in the perfect world, you're perfectly healthy, you add black tea extract in, you get a 10% little change on your life from 51 to 56 days. But if you're really unhealthy, you eat a cruddy diet and you're only gonna live for 15 days, adding black tea extract in can almost double your life to 28 days. So with this, what we're looking at is the ability to oxidize, or in this case, neutralize free radicals that come from a highly oxidative diet, from a diet that might not be very good for you. And how I would suggest sort of implementing this is, well, black tea is going to be a much more pungent, highly antioxidant rich tea. It's just that green tea has a lot more of the right antioxidants. So if you have it your way, consume both. What I do is I get my caffeine from green tea in the morning, and then I usually drink decaf black tea in the afternoon. I'll even drink like the Zevia drinks that have some stevia in them, like they're decaf Zevia black teas, right? Those are a super good way for me to get the polyphenols, the black tea extracts, the theoflavins that impact certain things. What I would recommend is that if your diet is off kilter, it is not a stretch to increase your black tea consumption. It actually makes a lot of sense. It's not weird. It's not to say, oh man, my diet hasn't been too good. Screw it. No, it actually makes perfect sense to say my diet's been kind of bad. I'm going to offset some of these effects by increasing my antioxidant intake via green tea, and specifically in this case, via black tea. So it's not crazy, it's something that's somewhat vetted in science, and it's easy and cheap to do. I'll see you tomorrow.